on Whisper News tonight, the state hazmat team investigating a suspicious package in Auburn. Police are now looking for who left it there. Plus, demolition for a 90-year-old building in Worcester delayed what future plans for the site hold. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Olivia Lemon. We begin tonight in Auburn where the state's hazmat team was on scene for a period of the night. The Auburn Fire and Police Department were called to Coolidge Street around 430 Thursday afternoon for reports of a suspicious package. Police say residents at 10 Coolidge Street went to get mail out of their mailbox when they noticed there was only a small package inside. The package contained two threatening handwritten letters with a white substance inside. Police say they do not believe the sus substance is dangerous and there is no threat to the community. Mail party has been the subject of uh, harassment and some threatening text messages and voicemails over the course of the last 18 months he reported to us tonight. To the best of my knowledge, he hadn't previously reported this to our department, but it's, it's ongoing and it may possibly relate to his, his side employment as a uh, DJ. Police are investigating who dropped off the package. It did not have any U.S. postal stamps on it. Crews cleared the scene around 8.30 Thursday night. A 90-year-old building in Worcester isn't being torn down quite yet. The old Paris Cinema building on Franklin Street was originally scheduled to be demolished the beginning of March. Now it will be around April. The developers of the Grid District have plans to turn the old building into a brew garden. It's part of Worcester's Redevelopment Authority's Downtown Urban Revitalization Plan. The development group MG2 is expecting the demolition to cost about $500,000. A new park and visitor center in Worcester is one step closer to being a reality. A meeting Thursday night at the Quinsigamon Village Community Center discussed plans for the future Blackstone Gateway Park. The park will feature a half mile of accessible walking paths, boardwalks and pedestrian bridges. The adjacent building will house a visitor center and the DCR region's headquarters. People who live and work nearby say they are excited for this new addition to Worcester. Very encouraged. I'm, I'm, more than that, I'm very excited because this is the neighborhood in which my father grew up and to see it grow into something into the 21st century where people are going to want to come and learn about Worcester. I was born in Worcester. The designs and the projects that they have outlined are very, very glowing. And I say that because it's been such a long time in coming. It was a lot of things that we've been working on this for so long, you know, working with Congressman McGovern, the city manager's office, and the state level. Uh, we've really been working on this for almost 15, 20 years, the visitor center. So it's a lot of, you know, uh, joy that we're finally, we're going to see shovels in the ground soon. Construction is expected to be finished on the new multi-use facility by July 2018. New details tonight in the Vanessa Marcotte investigation. Today, authorities announced they have a description of a person of interest in the case. Marcotte was killed in August of last year and her case remains unsolved. Our Andy Madison was at today's press conference and has more on the update. We have an update into the investigation of Vanessa Marcotte's murder. Six months last after August. Vanessa Marcotte was killed in Princeton, there have been no arrests or named suspects. But Thursday, District Attorney Joseph Early Jr. says new evidence could help investigators find Vanessa's killer. We have the person's DNA. We have a DNA profile. We don't have their name. Early says they are looking for a Hispanic or Latino man in his 30s who had short hair and scratches on him on the day of the attack. He spoke to the media for the first time in several months about the case, saying they came up with the description based on DNA analysis and witness statements. I'm not going to tell you where the DNA was recovered from, but we feel that this this DNA is from our person of interest. We're very comfortable putting out a description of what he looks like, the car he was driving, the condition that he was in that day. Marcotte had been living in New York City and was home for the weekend visiting family. Circumstances which have led many to wonder about her killer. Signs around town call for justice for Vanessa. And residents are hoping this new information is a sign justice is coming. Having a wife that likes to go out and walk and jog and kids that want to go out and play. You know, to have it unsolved is a little bit troublesome. Maybe this person in town here, when we live around us, we don't know him. The district attorney says that the person of interest was likely driving the dark colored SUV they've been looking for. Now, more than six months after Vanessa Marcotte was killed, they're hoping this information will lead to them finding the killer. In Princeton, Andy Madison, 
Worcester News Tonight. Thank you, Andy. The description of the person of interest in the in the murder of Vanessa Marcotte has many similarities to the description of a suspect who assaulted two joggers back in June of 2016 in Northborough and Westboro. On June 23rd, 2016, police were handing out flyers to the public in search of a Hispanic male in his early 30s with short hair and an athletic build. Northboro Police Chief William Liver says a female jogger noticed the man was running after her and grabbed her from behind, but then left due to cars passing by. A similar inci incident happened later that day in Westboro with the same male description. Westboro Police Chief Alan Gordon says the suspect was never caught. Similarities, you know, we, we did investigate and we had the detectives that were walking the area. It was right around Lake Chauncey and we, we did share the information with the state police. Uh, unfortunately, we were not able to identify anybody. Westboro police say like the Marcotte investigation, they were also looking for an SUV during the incident. Gordon says he has been in close contact with the district attorney. I know the district attorney's office and the uh, state police detectives, you know, they have put many, many hours into this. And again, we've worked with them. Uh, we have shared our information and, and, you know, I know they want closure as much as everybody else does on this case. Gordon says this update gives him hope they will be able to positively identify the person responsible. Record-breaking temperatures brought many outside at the Worcester Common today. The temperature reached 64 degrees, beating the old record, record high back in 1990. On a day that feels like spring, the Common has a new feature that is sure to bring about many Patriots fans. Our Catherine Andrioli has the details. It may feel like spring, but there's still ice on Worcester Common, and it's not on the skating rink. We set up thousands of sculptures every year in ballrooms that are 75 to 80 degrees, and they last 8 to 10 hours. So this is no different than doing a sculpture indoors. Don Chappelle owns brilliant ice sculptures. Today he carved a fan favorite, an ice sculpture of Patriots quarterback and Super Bowl MVP Tom Brady. We'll do the Lombardi Trophy as well so people can stand next to Tom Brady with the actual Lombardi Trophy made out of ice. Spring-like temperatures brought many outside to enjoy the sun during school vacation week. Well, we're on school vacation, so it's the perfect time to have this kind of weather, and then you can meet up with friends and have lunch outside. So. Some of the business owners here at Worcester Common say the warm temperatures bring a lot more business to them on Worcester Common. They're hoping for more warm temperatures in the forecast. Oh, yeah, what a difference it makes. You get above 50 degrees, and the Worcester Common comes alive. It's just awesome. Warm temperatures are in the forecast this weekend, so if you find yourself downtown and want to take a picture with Tom Brady, he will be on Worcester Common until he melts. Go! Patriots! In Worcester, Catherine Andrioli, Worcester News Tonight. Thank you, Catherine. And this is the fifth Tom Brady the sculptor has carved this year, and he hopes to do many more events like this one. And while the ice sculpture of Tom Brady wasn't melting, the ice on Lake Quinsigamon was. Fire officials are warning the public to stay off lakes and ponds. Lake Quinsigman had a thin layer of ice in some spots and open water in others. Lake Quinsig is a popular rowing spot, and if the warm temperatures continue, crew teams may be able to get some early practice in the 